What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to a new positional breakdown video for the 2024 NFL Draft. Today, we are talking about some pass rushers, specifically the edge group here. We're not going to waste a whole lot of time, but before we do get started, if you enjoy, please take a second to hit that like button. It really helps me out. But also, if you enjoy, please do subscribe. Join me on this mission to get 100,000 subscribers, getting so close here, and it'll make sure you don't miss any of these positional breakdowns, mock drafts, draft content, my live stream, you name it as we head up to the draft here. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. And the thumbnail for this video says top 10 edge rushers. I'm actually lying straight to your face. We're going to talk about 11 players today, uh, though I don't think many of you are going to complain about that. For those that caught my wide receiver rankings video, this year, I've made some changes to how I do things in that I'm much more willing to just give ties in my grading scale to indicate when there's a cluster of players, a tier of players that it really just comes down to schematic or stylistic preference. And I feel this is a better way to indicate that, OK, so if my quote unquote 11th ranked edge rusher gets drafted ahead of my eighth in this case, it's not that that was a reach. It's just, well, they are viewed very tightly, and it's just a matter of scheme or style. So that's the way we're going to do this thing. And let's start with technically my 11th ranked edge rusher or my 8D ranked edge rusher. And that's going to be one of the bigger sort of kind of boom or bust prospects in this edge class. And that's going to be Austin Booker out of Kansas. And I'm going to be honest with Booker. I got a poor first impression on him before I got to the film. I got to see him down there in person at the senior bowl where people were talking about him. He declared early as a junior, a lot of athletic traits. But in the one on ones at the senior bowl, he really did not impress me. And then at the combine, he runs a four seven nine for a guy that just hasn't played a lot and is supposedly getting drafted off of the traits. So before I got into the film, I was like, oh, man, what what is there to like in this guy? But fortunately, when the tape came on, I was impressed by Austin Booker and I think he gets the tag of being a raw developmental pass rusher. And I certainly think he is a developmental pass rusher in that I don't think you take him to be a starter day one. I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. But I don't necessarily think he's raw. I think he's green and unrefined. And what I mean by that is that he actually has all of the techniques you look for in both phases, honestly, as a pass rusher, uh, just inside that individual Texas game hell, we saw him break out swim moves, spin moves, rip moves, power moves. He has the full pass rushing tool belt. And as a run defender, he actually shows multiple ways to deconstruct blocks. He has long arms. He has powerful hands. He will stack his blocks and uh, get off of them with a push and pull move, but he also has really quick feet and can slip off of blocks and swim off of blocks in the run game and as a pass rusher. So as you watch his tape and like, especially in that Texas game alone, we really saw like the full package is in there. The problem is going to be, at least when it comes to his pass rushing ability, the efficiency there. It's one thing to have a swim move, a spin move, a bull rush, and all of these things in your tool belt. It's a whole nother layer to being an effective, efficient NFL pass rusher to know when to go to those moves. And with Booker, you will see him maybe go to the spin move, but he doesn't realize that the guard is unoccupied and he's just going to spin right into the guard. Or maybe the tackle does a power set and he's expecting a vertical set and he goes to the wrong move that just gets stunted right away. It's going to be that on the fly ability to react to what he's getting and going to the right pass rush move in the right situation. And on top of that, just getting more reps and making sure that these moves that he does have are fully refined. He shows them, he shows the ability to win with them, but sometimes he uses them and they're just ineffective, you know? So this is a guy that's played just over 500 snaps in his career. That's why it was curious that he came out. It's why people say he's a 
uh, underdeveloped pass rusher. That much is very true, but it's not similar. It's not like a lot of guys you see where it's just okay. They're super athletic. They like to go to power and speed rush, kind of like Chop Robinson, who we'll talk about later. But they don't really have a lot of pass rush moves. That's not the case with Austin Booker. So that, that's a lot of fun. Now the reason that he isn't up there with spoiler alert someone like chop robinson is he he isn't a freak athlete right he did run a 48 at the combine and you watch his tape i don't think he has crazy explosiveness in terms of north south ability to convert speed to power and the ability to threaten the corner he has bend but it just takes him a little bit longer to threaten that corner so For Booker, it's not that he isn't a good athlete. He is. It's just his athletic traits are much more in terms of lateral agility, the quickness, and the bend. And that's why the spin move and the swim move are his most effective pass rush moves and why I think those will be his most consistent ways to win at the next level. Now, he has some element of explosiveness. He can beat you with power because he's got long, strong arms and he likes to run his feet at you. So... You hope that that can be some bit of a way that he wins in the NFL, but I don't think we're talking about a guy that is going to have that dominant athleticism, the dominant sense of power to really project as like a high on number one type of guy, but as a guy that, in my opinion, you take in the third round of the draft and you start him as a as a designated pass rusher, you can sprinkle in some run defense reps. Again, he can get off blocks, but... He is green there in terms of eye discipline and knowing when the ball is coming his way in the run game. And he is a little bit lighter. He is 242 pounds, so he will get driven back against the run. That's probably never going to be a huge strength of his game, though for that size, he actually impressed me against the run with that ability to slip off blocks. But anyway, you start him as a third or a fourth rotational pass rusher where he can just continue to refine, get good coaching from the NFL that he wasn't necessarily getting at Kansas and have some mentors around him. And I think in two or three years, you could be talking about a starting caliber edge, a three down player and kind of a steal in the third round. But there is a bust aspect there. He had to leave Minnesota to get playing time. He isn't the most explosive athlete. I don't think he's going to step in and, you know, dominate NFL tackles right away. So that's sort of your risk aspect, your range of outcomes on a guy like Austin Booker. Whereas as we transition to my 8C ranked edge rusher or my 10th ranked edge rusher, whichever way you want to look at that, Adisa Isaac is really, in a lot of ways, the opposite. This is a guy that I I don't really see with a ton of potential to be a starting edge rusher in the NFL, but I do think he's one of the higher floor, early impact types of players, very much different than the way I view Austin Booker. The same overall grade in terms of take him in the third round, but for much different reasons, right? So you can start to see some of the just stylistic preferences that I'm talking about within these tiers. But I I do think I'm actually a little bit lower on Adisa Isaac. I've seen him projected more middle of the second round. And I just, if I'm taking a guy in the second round, I want him to project as a potential starter someday. And again, I I just don't see that with Isaac. Here's why it it comes down to the pass rushing. Really? I, (laughs) He is a average NFL athlete, if not slightly below average, yet his go-to pass rush moves as a fifth-year player, mind you, are pass rush moves that are very much dependent on athletic traits. He really just goes bull rush and speed rush, where he's going to try to win the corner and bend around you, and he's got decent speed he's got decent power he's got decent bend but none of it is like great traits like he is not like his teammate chop robinson that basically tries to win the same way uh, but chop robinson has one of the best first steps and ran a 448 that's not adiza isaac right he ran a 47 something and it shows on tape so at his age i'm just not really projecting him to develop this great finesse pass rushing skill set and become someone that you really want out there on pass rush downs a lot. Now, the reason he's still in this group and why I would still spend a third round pick on him is because of his floor 
for early down work as a locked and loaded day one number three edge, which is incredibly valuable for you. In a, as a part of a rotation, that's a player that can play 400, 450 snaps for you. Keep your star pass rushers fresh and healthy for those pass rushing opportunities on third down and get a guy like Isaac that can come in and do a lot of the dirty work, right? He is teach tape for run defense. You can tell that this guy has been in the Big Ten where teams love to throw the run at you, and you can tell that he has uh, really had to earn it through the right technique against the run. He is classic, like, firm base, stack your blocker, hands inside, extend, peak, where's the ball, is the ball coming my way? If so, shed, throw your blocker aside, make a play. That is Adiza Isaac's best strength, and that will play in the NFL. In fact, I love my pro comp for him. It is to another Big Ten edge rusher at a similar size who has carved out a really nice role in the NFL, Jonathan Cooper for the Denver Broncos. And Cooper has probably gotten the best case scenario in terms of being a pass rusher where he actually has given Denver kind of low end number two pass rush production. And maybe for Adisa Isaac, that is possible, but much more so the way that Cooper came into the league for Denver as a third edge who got playing time early because of his technique and play strength and effort against the run and some some of that edge flexibility as a 3-4 stand-up edge linebacker to drop into coverage and, sh and show some instincts that way too. Also good awareness to feel out screens and deflect passes to the sideline and that kind of stuff. That to me is Adisa Isaac. And as a third round pick, critical depth, someone that is going to play a lot of time for you on a cost-controlled rookie contract, that to me screams third round pick. Before we get to our next player here, as I'm sure you guys know, draft season is crazy busy for me. Just a constant cycle of watching the film, doing my write-ups, and then getting this content out to you guys. And I got to tell you, Factor is a true game changer for me. Factor will send you a box of fresh, never frozen, home-cooked quality meals that you throw in the microwave, they're ready to eat in just a couple minutes. It saves you that trip to the grocery store and the extra dishes, and the food's just good, man. It's, I'm gonna be honest, it's a lot better than anything I could cook, that's for sure. You can customize your meal plans. Uh, you can get anything from four to 18 meals a week, and if you know you're gonna be out of town, you can you know fully customize it, you can skip a week. Overall, Factor is, like I said, just a game changer for Anybody like me living a busy lifestyle, but you just want that lifestyle to be filled with better food, better eating, better nutrition. So if you want to get started, head over to Factor75.com, use promo code TFG so they know I sent you, and they will take 50% off of your first box. And right now they are offering free wellness shots for life. Talk about making sure you get that nutrition that your body needs. So that is promo code TFG50 over at Factor75.com. Okay, next up in this tier to kick things off is a completely different flavor, uh, and that is Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan. He's a big, thumping edge rusher out of the MAC. And while he's big, and I called him a thumper, and he certainly wins with power, right? He's got, he's 268 pounds. He's got 34 and a half inch arms. He can pile drive, pile drive tackles. He can stunt inside and win with power against guards. That's a big part of his game, but he's not just a thumper. He actually has a decent amount to like from his skill set as well in a variety of different moves in his pass rushing tool belt. Despite his size, he's actually a pretty good athlete. He's got good get off and he's got quick feet, and that allows him to win on really a beautiful spin move that he can rip to the inside as an inside counter. He also knows how to how to beat you with a swim move and a rip move, and all of this is a complement off of the fear of that bull rush. So he's a guy that just, he has no qualms about who he is as a rusher. He's a no-nonsense uh, type of rusher that just understands a few different ways to keep guys honest so they can't just keep getting ready for that bull rush every time. He's a high motor player. He defends the run as well as you would hope for a bigger guy. But the catch is he's just really not anything all that special as an athlete. And that's where my pro comp of Derek Barnett comes into play. In fact, 
the similarities between those two players is eerie. Barnett, though, was a guy that had a different path to the NFL out of the SEC. He was a first-round pick that really never emerged as a high-end starter, but a guy that, at his size, again, could defend the run, win with power, and had a surprising amount of finesse for a bigger guy. But because of the lack of real juice for that edge position, he's just struggled to sustain a num like a starting edge job. Philadelphia had him as depth. They cut him. He went to Houston, played well. I just see a very similar player to Marshawn Neeland. I think he could potentially have a better career because Barnett was buried behind so many great edge rushers in Philadelphia. His opportunities were less. Um, and I think Neeland could even become a low-end number two type of guy, but I just don't think he has crazy upside. And as a fifth year player coming out of a lower level of competition, I again have him as more of a third round pick, but I do prefer him to Isaac and Booker, who we've talked about. And then we have my 8A ranked player here, and this is Chris Braswell out of Alabama. And Braswell's a, a fascinating player, and and I think with my ranking of him as, as more of a third round type of player, I'm a little bit lower on him as well than sort of the top 50, top 60 sort of typical projections you see for Braswell. Not that I'm too far off of that, but there's there's certainly other guys I prefer more than him. Um, but there's there's certainly stuff to like with him. And, and similar to Neyland, I could see him becoming a number two starter in the league. Um, but when it comes to how consistent he's going to be at the next level, if asked to be a true starter, I have some concerns. The weirdest thing about Chris Braswell is he has the size. He's got good athleticism. He's got the length, sort of, you know, just over 33-inch arms is pretty solid. Um, but he's really an abysmal run defender, which for a Nick Saban-coached team, I, I hate to call it a red flag, but it's certainly interesting for, for a player like this the D linemen at Alabama tend to be so well well coached, so great with their hand placement and their gap discipline, the ability to shed at the point of attack. It's not the case with Chris Braswell. He consistently lets guys run right by him. He's not very involved as a, as a run defender. And that aspect of the game, his ability to come in as a third edge and eat early down work, I think does hurt his projection a little bit because I don't think he's going to come in and just eat starting snaps right away or um, be a primary edge rusher either. So his path to playing time is a little bit, I'll just say, less concise than some of these other guys. Um, now, in terms of his upside as a pass rusher, Probably the highest that we've talked about, other than Austin Booker, who's more of that boomer bust profile. Braswell has very good pass rushing tape. He really has a power rusher's profile. And he's definitely a guy um, that is going to base his entire pass rush plan off of that bull rush. And um, the flashes from Chris Braswell, when he can land that bull rush, are awesome. He has excellent technique. He's got a great first step. He's got a powerful upper half. He can kind of have those reps where he really launches himself into a guy's chest, blows up the block, and just is entirely disruptive. So that's the best thing that he's going to bring to the table. And then he's got a pretty good skill set off of that in terms of inside counters. He's working on a cross chop move, which I love to see him try it, but it does have mixed results. And that takes me to really the fact that he's, he's a good athlete, but he's not a great athlete. If you're going to go to a cross chop, it requires... I mean, it requires hand usage, which he has, but it requires a lot of quickness and bend and core balance. And that's where with Braswell, I see him try these cross chops and he'll get his hand across, but he doesn't really continue to bend or accelerate through the rest of the move. And he is very much a north and south athlete, hence why that power rush and those kind of swipes inside counters are his most effective counter. So if you're talking about a guy that might not be the best run defender, that isn't an incredible athlete, is he just a good third edge rusher or a low end number two over time? That's kind of how I see him. So there's your cluster of four there. We're not going to have tiers for all of these. We're getting into some more concise rankings here. We do have a tie 
for my number four edge rusher coming up. But you can certainly see sort of how those um, just different schematic and stylistic differences show up in a lot of similarly ranked players there. Um, but let's get to my number seven ranked player. This is Braylon Trice out of Washington. And Trice has been a mainstay in college football over the last two seasons. Over the last two years, he's got 150 pressures, 17 sacks. And in his final season, his 923 snaps played is the most any edge rusher has recorded in all of college football over the last five seasons. So you're talking about a guy that is always available. He's persistent. He's consistent. And he's got a super high motor when he's out there on the field. And that's a good starting point. But you don't put up those types of numbers if you don't have some stuff to like as a pass rusher, right? And he certainly does. But what's interesting about him is he he's a weird size. He weighed in 25 to 30 pounds less than he was listed at Washington. We thought this guy was like 270 pounds. And he kind of plays like he's 270 pounds. But he does have a really light lower half. And that showed up in his weigh-in at 248 at the Combine. Also didn't really run all that well. Just a 4.7240, a 1.6510 split. Those are good numbers. That's adequate size. But you're certainly not talking about a freak athlete here. You're just talking about kind of an average NFL athlete at the position. But his tape's really good, man. I think he can be a starter, a number two edge rusher in the league. He's another one of these pass rushers that is a bull rush first type of player who is then going to package a variety of different moves as a threat off of that bull rush. But he is super consistent with that bull rush. He's got a great first step. He's got that technique to really wind up, convert speed to power. He's got dynamite for hands. And then once once you think you're you're going to be able to stop that bull rush, that's when he can, you know, flatten his back and get to a rip move. He's got a bunch of inside counters with swims and swipes and spins, and he's also a really effective uh, pass rusher later in the rep. He can win early, um, but with his motor and just kind of the instincts to deconstruct blocks as a pass rusher and find his way to the quarterback, the longer that, you know, play goes on, he's really good at finding his way to the quarterback, eventually flushing him out of the pocket. A lot of guys will have dominant go-to moves, but will get stuck on blocks. That's not Braylon Trice. So he is a high motor, solid athlete with excellent technique as a pass rusher. That to me is enough to say that this guy can be a number two edge in the league. But that said, he fairly similarly to Braswell is not the best run defender. I do think Trice is a little better with his eyes, a little bit better getting off of blocks, but you can really see the lack of athleticism and really anchor ability because of that lighter lower half for Braylon Trice. A lot of his run reps are kind of ugly, where he's getting driven off the ball. Um, he's also just not a great tackler. He's got shorter arms. Again, in space, he's not the best athlete. He missed an obscene amount of tackles. 26%, in fact, in his final year. So um, definitely some criticisms there. And, and, a, and a similar style player, but I do think he's just a more consistent pass rusher, and that's why he's a tick above a Chris Braswell. Let's get to my number six edge rusher for the 2024 draft, a player that by my ranking of him here is going to make it seem like I'm lower on him, but that's really just because there's someone in this class that I think is a big sleeper that is going to come in as my 4A that I ended up putting above Darius Robinson. It's really not an indictment of Darius Robinson because I actually liked him a lot more than I anticipated. Was down there at the Senior Bowl where Darius Robinson was getting unbelievable hype. Like people saying this guy's going to go in the top half of the first round in the draft. And I, you know, I was just starting to collect information and get caught up in the college season, but I did know he was more of a projected third round type of guy. So for him to make that type of jump off of a couple pass rush wins and 
ridiculous size at the Senior Bowl, I was very hesitant, to say the least. And even his workout was a little bit underwhelming, right? He ran a 4.95. He's a good athlete at his size, but really nothing insane in terms of athletic testing. So another guy that heading into watching his tape, I felt like he was going to kind of turn into one of those not my guys in this draft. And that's not what happened. I liked his tape a lot. And I wish I could share some of it, but we're staying away from SEC footage this year because um, they don't want YouTubers to uh, let people know that their players are good at football. But with Darius Robinson, he is a massive, thumping edge rusher that will also be able to step inside really and hold up as a three tech in a lot of different packages and not in like a oh yeah it's third and 12 let's put our edge guy on a guard and see if he can win like no you can legitimately put Darius Robinson out there on first and 10 as a three tech if you want to he is 6'5", 285 pounds, and played defensive tackle until his fifth season at Missouri where he slid out to the edge. So he can do that. He's got experience doing it. But it's not just, oh, he's played it before. It's like, no, this guy has a real anchor against the run. His motor and his effort against the run is incredible. He's got near 35-inch arms. He uses them well to stack his blocker, to extend, to see the run. He's got good discipline. You can tell that he's played defensive tackle because you've really got to do that stuff as a three-tech even more than at the edge. Um, but it definitely translated when he got to go up against offensive tackles, they just did not know how to handle that type of size profile. And I think that's going to happen in the NFL. We've seen this with just a collection of players that I think are decent comps for Robinson. I wrote down Leonard Williams, where actually their RAS comparison is eerily close. Leonard Williams has mostly been a three tech in the NFL, but in 2021, I believe, maybe 2020, he played mostly off the edge for the New York Giants, and that was actually Leonard Williams' best season in his career. And I think with Darius Robinson, we'll see much more of a player like that in terms of usage in the NFL because he's entering the league categorized more as an edge rusher. But other guys like this would include Calais Campbell, who's been better as an edge rusher than an interior player. Eric Armstead, who's a much better run defender off the edge. Um, but I do think Leonard Williams is the closest physical comp for a Robinson. Um, but in terms of pass rushing, that's really where I was impressed by Darius Robinson. No, he's not fast. And honestly, where where I where I'm most hesitant on him, or or at least um, somewhat hesitant, is he doesn't have really the ability to con like he's big, but he does not have the ability to convert speed to power. And a lot of his bull rush reps, well, they're just underwhelming given how big he is. Like you can tell again there that he's been mostly a defensive tackle in that when he goes to the bull rush, it's much more like you would from a defensive tackle where it's in shorter areas where he's just getting off the ball, getting on top of his blocker really quickly with inside leverage, and then running his feet to, to create that push like you would as a defensive tackle. Whereas if you wanna be a dominant bull rusher off the edge, you wanna rush wide, you wanna set up an angle, you wanna uh, have that ability to really load up, convert that speed to power, and that explosiveness to drive into your guy. He doesn't really have that. So that's gonna be the biggest knock on him, but because he's so good with that first um, impact to get those long hands on guys, he has a lot of the times an unblockable push, pull, swim move. Watching his film, I felt like I, I was taking my kid to swim class. Like dude was putting swim move on after swim move after swim move and most guys couldn't handle it. Now, the other kind of concern there is it, it did become a little bit redundant. A lot of times guys were ready for it. And when he would lift that arm, you would see a tackle or even in the Florida game, a tight end knew it was coming and disengaged and actually had a great technique to basically just trap that arm from being able to complete the swim and just catch that arm before they could go arm over. And he's just going to have to de develop some form of another counter, whether it's 
um, with more time off the edge, developing that ability to go to that speed to power bull rush, whether it's a, a spin move, I think he's got the quickness at his size to pull off, a rip move. There are other things he can do. It's just he's going to have to add those moves to his profile. He's only played edge for a year, so I like to think that if he can just add one more move to his pass rush repertoire, you're looking at a difficult block as a rusher and an elite run defender and a guy with positional flexibility. And for me, that can be a late first and early second round pick. I've got a top 50 grade on Darius Robinson. Look, I was afraid I was going to have a third round grade on Darius Robinson, like what happened with me with Keon White last year, who had some similarities in terms of the the tweener profile and the um, senior bowl hype. I didn't feel that way with Darius Robinson. So I, I like him a lot, but he is going to be a little bit more of an acquired taste, a little bit more scheme dependent. Definitely going to want to be a 4-3 team that drafts him uh, so he can play some off the edge because I, I don't think you're drafting him to be a 3-4 end. I, I don't. I think you're taking him to be an edge uh, with his hand in the dirt that can slide inside on passing downs. But yeah, I, I like him. I think he can be a good starter in the league, similar to uh, a Leonard Williams, who's been a, a you know a good number two type of piece. I, I think Robinson has a path to become that type of player in the league. All right, I mentioned I was going to have a tie with my fourth ranked edge rushers here, four A, four B. And by the way, if you want my opinions on all of my rankings, all of the edge rushers in this class, head over to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash that franchise guy. You can get my full write-ups there with my draft board. Uh, we Right now, we have 17 edge rushers written up. That's going to grow up into you know about 30 guys come draft day, so you can see my thoughts on any of the guys we didn't talk about in this video or really all of the positions as we go. Uh, but let's get into my number five ranked edge rusher, my 4B edge rusher, Chop Robinson, our second Penn State guy on the list. And honestly, there's less time to spend on Chop Robinson because you kind of know what sort of bed you're getting into with him. He is very raw. I would say he is the most truly raw player on this list, honestly, because um, I think Booker, like we said, was unrefined. Um, but Robinson really is just an athlete out there. Reminds me so much, and this is a part of why I think I'm maybe a touch lower on him, and I think there's a lot of bust potential in him. Reminds me a lot of like Vic Beasley, uh, a lot of Bruce Irvin, guys that were drafted in the first round off of crazy speed, crazy bend, crazy get off. But the lack of completeness in terms of defending the run and having other ways to beat you as a pass rusher other than just running around the corner uh, just kind of caught up to those guys and they they struggled to really i would say over the course of their career pay back first round draft pedigree um, now i still like chop robinson i'm excited about his upside if it's late late one or early second round i understand taking a chance on him because he really does have a trait that no one in this draft class has and no one you know, maybe every three years you get a guy like Chop Robinson that has the first step and the bend that he has at the college level. He collects some pass rush wins, man. There's a lot of tackles that won't be playing in the NFL that just they cannot get to the landmark. It's just geometry with Chop Robinson. He's going to li line up out wide and a lot of offensive tackles just can't get out of their stance quick enough to get to that landmark and seal that edge. It's the speed, it's the get off, and then the bend to work around that corner. Lethal at the college level. And then what you see from Chop is he is decent at recognizing if a guy is going to really sell out, if he oversets or if he starts to lean and chase early, he does have the quickness with some swipe moves to have an inside counter now you need to see that more consistently but it's in there so that's really how he wins he threatens the corner if you overset he'll count he'll step inside and then he also shows very few but they're in there flashes of power and that to me is really what you need to see him um, develop at the next level is not just okay i'm gonna run around you or i'm gonna slip by you it's you also have to account for me resetting in the middle of this approach and just loading into your chest and driving you backwards because he has the ability, but he just has to develop that technique. Um, 
and the ability to recognize when to go to that. And if that's there, that's when you're talking about him hitting his upside. If he doesn't, or if he doesn't develop a variety of different pass rush moves, things like cross jobs and spins and swims, be another way for him to reach his upside. But I think the easiest way for him is just to get to get the bull rush going. Um, but if if he can't develop a complement to the speed, a lot of NFL tackles are going to be able to meet that landmark and just lock him up. Because if he gets stuck on a block, he's really not going anywhere. So he's a, he's a risky profile. The other thing is there's just really not a run defense profile to speak of there. He's undersized. He has shorter arms. And, you know, I, I think he ended up coming in at 254. He technically could develop as a run defender but he's really bad at it man he doesn't really have the technique he doesn't have the gap discipline he frankly doesn't even have the best effort on run defense downs a long way to go before you're trusting him on early downs as well so he's young he's a true junior coming out hasn't played a ton in college he rotated a lot um he does have some um some some bust potential there's there's really no way around it i don't think people are really going to argue with that either but let's get to what I've been alluding to as a bit of a surprise ranking here as my really my fourth ranked edge rusher in this class. I got to him just today as of the recording of this video. I didn't even know if he would crack the top 10 and I fell in love with Jonah Ellis out of Utah. Just blown away by all of the different ways that this guy wins as a pass rusher. And the other thing is this like it makes sense that he is a technically refined guy, even though he he turns 21 in a month. He's a young dude, but I mean, he is the son of Luther Ellis, who played defensive tackle in the NFL for 10 years, and all three of his brothers are in the NFL. So this isn't some unathletic white dude. Like, he didn't test at the combine because he's coming off a shoulder injury, but if he did, he, I think, would have really blown up the combine and created much more hype for himself the other thing is he wasn't able to go to the you know uh senior bowl or the shrine bowl and kind of put his skills on display his season ended short unfortunately and he was i think on a first round trajectory until about the seventh week of the college season against usc his shoulder just couldn't hang and you respect his toughness he played another four games through that he was adequate but clearly he could not use that i think it was his left arm and that injury completely derailed his skill set because while he's got so many different ways to beat you and i want to talk more about that the core of of how he wins is he's 62 he has 33 inch arms so that's good arm length relative to his shorter height the baseline of his entire skill set in both phases of the game run and pass is winning that inside leverage where he has hammers for hands, accurate hands, and excellent hand like just usage overall with swipes and pushes and pulls and rips. Um, you could tell once that injury happened, he's punching with one hand. He's leaving that left arm just kind of hanging and not able to use it. And he had to kind of freelance some way to win. And it just led to a much more inconsistent product in the last month of the season and I think a lot of people maybe go in a projected third round pick in Jonah Ellis right now um, and just watch a game at the end of the year see his tape and say oh this guy's really inconsistent he's not that good but clearly it was the injury and they shut him down after like four weeks they were like we appreciate the toughness you've put some good reps out there but come on man you are you 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 do not have to do this and they shut him down um, I don't know if he had surgery. I would assume he had surgery because he hasn't been able to do, do any of the pre-draft stuff. Uh, it, it can be tough sometimes because college just is, they're not as transparent with these guys in terms of what's going on health-wise than the NFL is with, with, I mean, there's gambling in college, so there should be more transparency with college football. But um, maybe Utah fans can let me know if, if I should be more worried about the injury. But um, barring that, man, I just really think Jonah Ellis can be a high-end starting edge in the league. I think he has power. He obviously has finesse. I think his size, while 
it can be a deficiency in the run. He's a the, the biggest knock on him is he's a little bit slender in his lower half. He can get driven off the ball in the run game. It, it'll happen. Um, so he's not a perfect player, but um, his size as a rusher really does play to his advantage because he's again 6'2", 248, 33 inch arms. That's easy inside leverage for him. He's a tough guy for opposing blockers to get their hands on. But again, the size, the finesse, he has power. He doesn't have like the most explosive first step. I think he could even improve his technique to get a better bull rush going there from a wider alignment. Um, but he does have power. He can defend the run. He can get off blocks. He's instinctive. He's also underdeveloped against the run. He just hasn't gotten a ton of reps there. Similar to what we said about Chop, like there's room for him to grow there for sure. Um, but I, I think Jonah Ellis... Um, just plays the run with with much better vision and effort than Chop. So I'm a I'm a big fan. He's going to be an obvious my guy in this draft. And and I didn't have a perfect pro comp for him as of this video, but I will say this: the way he moves, and I'll just say it, white dude, uh, bloodlines in the NFL, stand up edge is like his best position. I, I I think Jonah Ellis has watched a lot of T.J. Watt film. With the way he moves, the way he approaches the pass rushing, his spin move is insane, just like TJ Watt. Um, yeah, man, I'm a fan. I would take him at the end of round one, early round two, if the medicals were clear, and just say, F the haters, I believe in this kid. I, I, I think you could steal really one of the steals of the draft in this player. Like, I'm not going to put it lightly. I, I watched this guy play, and I was like, how, how are people not talking about him as a potential first-round player? He has completely flown under the radar because of this injury at the end of the season, in my opinion. And obviously, he's getting good advice from the NFL, too. He's declaring as a true junior. With the way his season ended, he very well could have just come back. But the NFL might have been like, eh, you're a top 50 player. Like, just come out. You'll be fine. So... We'll see. We'll see if um, my opinions on him are consistent with how the NFL feels and if he's maybe even a surprising first-round pick in April. But let's get into the top three now. This is much more chalk. These are players you've heard about, but let's continue to talk about them. Number three for me is Jared Verse. I think he's a very clear three uh, in this class, whereas I think one and two are much more up for debate. Uh, but yeah, Verse, he's a... Uh, He's a bull in a china shop, man. He has a great first step. He's got great size, uh, a nice combination of, you know, he's not the tallest guy, but he's got pretty good arm length. His arms are just ripped. He's got dynamite for hands, great hand placement. Um, the biggest thing that I think elevates Verse with his bull rush from Ellis and Darius Robinson, Braylon Trice, Marshawn Neeland, Austin Booker, his bull rush is just on a different planet because he's got that explosiveness in his lower half to really create that leg drive to pair with the upper body. He's just a nasty, nasty bull rusher. Now, there's some knocks. He's another one of these guys that just doesn't play the run as you would hope to see. He actually doesn't anchor very well. Um, while he's explosive in his lower half and has a great first step and convert speed to power, he is lighter in his lower half. He's very top heavy. And from a run defense perspective, number one, that hurts his anchor. You actually really see him given dri get driven off the ball. He can't really plant his, his legs and, and stand his ground. Even tight ends at times could kind of drive him off his spot. Um, but it also just kind of hurts his play playing balance when people are taking the fight to him. Uh, so there's actually like physical reasons why he doesn't defend the run all that well. But he also just doesn't have the best eyes. Knowing when the ball is coming his way, like a lot of times he'll lose track of the ball carrier. Uh, the guy will run right past him. So um, there's there's some frustrations in terms of run defense. I think he'll ultimately hold up okay there at the next level because he does have good play strength. Um, but I just don't know that he'll ever be a great run defender. Um, and then in terms of like the the finesse side of things, he's not just a bull rusher. He is a skilled pass rusher. He understands that he can win with swims and chop moves to win to the inside with counters and stuff um, but he's also just not the bendiest guy and and he's fast he can win to the corner he can flatten his back 
to dip under blockers, and he's got a good rip move to help him do that. But um, in terms of just raw speed to bend, um, winning that corner, it's not going to consistently scare you that way. But he he has no mistakes about who he is. He's going to beat you with the bull rush and then find a couple different ways to beat you. You wish he was a better run defender, but this is a starting edge rusher in the league. You take him round one, I think you plug him right in. Uh, I don't think there's a ton to really coach up as a pass rusher, really. Um, again, he, he kind of knows who he is, and I think it'll play at the next level. So to me, that's a first-round pick. Um, but these next two guys are just a little bit different uh, especially our number two edge rusher here. And that's actually going to be Dallas Turner. And I thought Dallas would be my number one because this is a traits-based position. If you want a, a true elite number one guy, um, it's it's probably the position in the league that if you want an elite guy is the most dependent on having those elite traits, the speed, the bend, the agility, the length. And Dallas Turner has all of it in a way that nobody in this draft class has in a way that guys don't have every year. Like you're not every year. You're going to find a, a guy with all of the tools put together like Dallas Turner. And that's probably why he will be the first edge rusher off the board. And I'm not even really going to argue with it, honestly, because if you've got a good coach and you see the projection, I really don't have any qualms with it. it was easy first round grade for Dallas Turner, but he is a lot more raw. For the most part, he's going to come out sort of similar to Chop Robinson, where he's going to come out and basically just try to win the corner um, and then use the threat of that corner to potentially counter with an inside move. And he's really just going rip moves all day long. Like he's going to fly off the ball, make you decide if you're going to take away the corner or if you're going to take away the inside. And then he dips and rips and bends in the opposite direction. And, you know, these freaky five-star top 10 type of edge guys that's a lot of times that's really all they have to do my high-end comp for him is brian burns who was like the same thing coming out of florida state brian flashed a few more like spin moves and some crazy shit sometimes but for the most part that's all brian burns did at florida state too leonard floyd my low-end comp for for dallas turner another one of these guys um you can even go down the board guys like jadavion Clowney, chase young these freaky freaky athletes that have elite alpha edge rusher potential uh josh allen another one of these guys in in, in college football they just they don't have to win with finesse against college tackles so why would they mess around with it too much but he messes around with it enough to let you know that it's in there and that's really where you get scared about uh uh, scared of his potential really with dallas turner like he flashes swipes and good hand usage he really flashes a bull rush again i wish i could show you some of this tape just gonna have to go watch some dallas turner highlight reels but you know what's in there it's just a matter of bringing them out more consistently against NFL level competition and him continuing to refine his game and knowing when to go to what moves as well. Like we talked about with Austin Booker. Now we've thrown out names like Clowney and Chase Young. He doesn't quite have the size of those guys. And while I don't really think that impacts him as a pass rusher, because again, I think he can very much convert speed to power and show power as a rusher. Um, I do think it impacts him in run defense. He plays with good pad level and can anchor okay, but you will see him get moved. And I do think some of that slenderness shows up in his ability to really stack blockers, control blockers. I I will say, I think his frame can continue to add five or six pounds of muscle, and I think he can be a good run defender. I don't really think it's an effort issue for him. Um, he's just very green and underdeveloped as a run defender. So, he, you know, the run defense aspect of things for Dallas Turner is very much wait and see at the next level. But I do think the pass rushing can be there day one just with the traits and some of the stuff he does. And then you're going to see the trajectory for him be off the charts. So more of a straightforward prospect, but that doesn't make him any less exciting. And if he goes off the board at eight to Atlanta or nine to Chicago and ahead of my number one ranked edge rusher, I'm not going to bat an eye, but I'm just, I'm not afraid to say that Lyatu Latu is the best pass rusher in this class. I know he's a fifth year player. I know he's not the elite athlete that Dallas Turner is, 
But the more and more I've watched of him, and the more I saw him move at the combine and run his 40, like I bet against him in his 40 time. I bet that he would be under a 47 40 time, like 474. Um, he he cleared that. He ran a 464. Like he's uh, probably a better credit than at least I gave him credit for, but that was because of what I had really heard of him because I hadn't really watched too much Laya Tu Latu, right? So I just think people aren't giving him enough credit for being a really good athlete. I think from an athletic standpoint, this is the second time I'm going to throw this name out there, but a guy that he kind of moves like and models a lot of his game after is TJ Watt. Now I'm going to stop the TJ Watt comparisons short of that, but man, um, we might go another five years before we see a pass rusher as technically refined as Laya Tu Latu. It's really something special. He he treats the pass rushing aspect of football like an art, and it is his passion. It's crazy. And just the way you saw him kind of light up talking about it at the Combine, too, it's you can tell this guy really cares. And he, he understands that, you know, you can't take this for granted. Every day he's going to go to work and continue to improve as well because he had to retire medically at Washington until the doctors cleared him to come back and play football. And I, I think that really opened things up from a life and work ethic perspective on him in, in a way that was, in a lot of ways, a gift to him. But on the field, man, I mean, where do you want to start? I'll, I'll tell you. I think you got to start with his cross-chop move. He has a hop cross-chop move that we talked about this earlier where Chris Braswell tries it but just can't really pull it off. Latu can pull it off because he has that natural, fluid athletic ability to 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 pull off this cross chop move which I'll get into it and, and kind of explain what this is while while trying to show it to you on film here the cross chop requires everything in terms of physical tools it requires speed and get off to get to the initial landmark it requires hand usage to take your backside arm swing it to the far side of the tackle or guard of or whoever you're going against. So to this point, we're talking about speed, get off, hand usage, agility, quickness. But then you require a power aspect and a core balance aspect to now take this positioning, drive the arm that you have just chopped over to the opposite side of the tackle, drive it back. That requires an immense amount of power and core balance to get that tackle out of position. And now you're talking about bend, where you have now tied your body into a pretzel, but you need that core balance to keep your feet, the quickness to keep your feet. And you've got this, you've got this free arm hanging here with a tackle that you have now put in a really compromising position that again, you have taken that Pilates formation and put your body in a pretzel. You can still push against that counter force with this left arm, create a little extra drive, and then you're talking about that bend and acceleration to maximize that hole. It's the move that Aaron Donald has really made famous. A lot of guys try it. Not a lot of guys can do it like Latu Latu. And he'll keep... He's like a play caller that if inside zone's working, if play action shot's working, why change it, right? Like Latu will force you to show as a tackle that you can find a way to stop that cross chop. Um, but then once once that tackle thinks he's got your cross chop, you're just getting started with Latu. Latu, Latu, and, and I think Trevor Sikama said this. I don't want to just steal this term without giving credit. Um, his speed to counter is unbelievable, and I think it's the fastest I've seen from a college prospect maybe ever. He... It's like a quarterback that can recognize the blitz or a running back that can see a hole open that no one else could. His on-the-fly reactionary quickness mentally and physically is insane. He, he knows what a tackle is doing, what the right counter move is to attack that, but his ability to process it and put that plan into motion just before... He, YouTuber scout can even process why he's doing what he's doing. He's already set that motion, uh, set that plan into motion. He he is so advanced for a college pass rusher. It's it's a marvel, and I'm just not afraid to make that guy my number one edge rusher, dude. Because he's got the traits, he's got the technique, he's got some power. He he doesn't have the most explosiveness. He's not going to consistently destroy you with a bull rush, but 
it's in there. He can he can mix it in and, and make you honest. And we've only mentioned a handful of the ways that he wins. He's got swims. He's got swipes. He's got spins. You name it. He's got rips. It's it's all in there. He goes to it all. He's read the encyclopedia on how to rush the passer. And frankly, he's rewritten it himself. So that's that's about as um, high of a praise as I can give Law to. But we haven't even talked about his run defense, where honestly, he's one of the best run defenders that we'll talk about here today. High effort, uses his length well, his foot speed that is probably the best asset for his pass rushing ability is a huge asset for him in the run game because he can slip blocks uh, equally as a run defender just as he does as a pass rusher. Uh, He even drops into coverage well. Like, dude, he's crazy. If he becomes a TJ Watt caliber player, I I just don't think that's out of range for Laiatu Latu. He's not quite the athlete of TJ Watt, but... His tape is, is actually kind of similar in a lot of ways. So I don't know if that's a hot take to have Latu Latu as, as edge one. But um, again, I just, I trust the tape, man. Um, as long as the medicals check out, which it sounds like there's really no worry there. I think someone's getting a really good one and, and they might even steal him a little bit because I do think Dallas Turner probably gets drafted ahead of him because of the traits. Uh, but uh, if you get Latu at 11 or 12 or 15 or 16, my goodness, he could be one of the best players in this entire draft class. And that's saying a lot because it's a damn good draft class. So um, that was fun. Edge rush is, is one of my favorite positions. It's Honestly, I think it's, it's one of my more accurate positions in terms of uh, correctly analyzing these guys. So it'll be fun, as always, to see how this all plays out. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys for watching. This was another fun one. This was another uh, hour-long one. Um, but I, I really appreciate you guys for For enjoying the video, for enjoying the draft content, please do hit that like button on the way out. Let me know what you think about the draft rankings down below. Where do you think I'm right? Where do you think I'm wrong? What are your rankings? The comments help the algorithm just as much as those likes. And just make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss these videos as we go. That's all we got. We'll see you guys later. Peace out.